everybody, welcome back to Taji's World of Books and welcome to another book series recommendation video. Hey you guys, welcome back. So let's settle in. I got my protein coffee, my keto cup, and I'm ready for a long chat because I have been waiting for Monroe from Cressley Cole, Immortals After Dark, to come out forever, like many of you. And so now that it is finally out, I sort of sat back and said, do I just want to read Monroe? I can read McCree because I know Monroe is, you know, Willem's brother. I could do that, but I'm not going to remember anything else about the series, so why don't I just read it all again? And I was like a little bit, you know, because it's like 18, 19 books if you count um, A Warlord Once Forever. Like that's 19, like it's 0.5. It's like the novella, like whatever. But still, that's a lot of books. Like do I really want to do that? And so I said, you know what? To have the best reading experience, I absolutely do want to read them all, all over again. And I did. And it was the best choice ever. It was twice the ride. It was as good as I remember it. Everything stood the test of time. Cressley Cole is an amazing writer. And so when I got to Monroe, like everything was fresh in my mind, obviously, and I had the best reading experience possible. Now, did I have to do that? No. All of those that said to me, all you have to do is read McReeve. Maybe you need to know a little bit about the Dacians and like, you know, about Lothair and all of that. And that'll probably be plenty good enough. And it probably would have been, but I read them all anyway, and I'm glad that I did. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. Have my coffee, and I'm ready to chat. Okay. The Warlord Wants Forever. You know, we've talked about this in the past. I'll go ahead and link videos of my previous conversations about Immortals After Dark to see if it kind of measured up, or see if you want to go back and check those out. If you can't, if you want to, you don't have to, but you know. So Warlord Once Forever, that's book five, it's a novella, it's about Mist the Valkyrie, and the Warlord is Nikolai. He's part of the Roth Brothers. So there's Nikolai, Conrad, Sebastian, and Nikolai, Conrad, Sebastian, and I think that's it. Those are, He's part of those brothers. And they basically are, they're these ancient warlords that are from Estonia, and they are four brothers, they are fighting with their king, they die in battle in King Kristoff's war and as a result of dying in battle Nikolai the one of the oldest decides that they are not going to let the sisters and the younger brothers die so they take it upon themselves to convert Conrad and Sebastian over to being immortals and Conrad and Sebastian don't take to this very well and are very upset and so they basically go their own way. They have later books in the story but this is Nikolai's story. Nikolai is in his you know in his stronghold and basically comes uh, up against a Valkyrie named Mist. She basically the way that the story sort of unfolds we learn that when a vampire reaches its immortality his blood his heart shuts down he no longer breathes and he is basically dead, well, the walking dead, if you will. And when he meets his bride, his mate, his fated mate, his forever person, then in essence his heart starts to beat again and she brings him to life. They call it a process by which they're blooded. Mist bloods Nikolai and Mist is a Valkyrie and they are these fae-like creatures that have three parents. They're part fury, they're intense and strong and all of these things, but they're you know petite and little, but they pack a punch. And they are ruthless, ruthless females that are cunning and ferocious and vicious and all of those things. She recognizes that she bloods Nikolai and what does she do? She leaves him hanging in agony and eternity because they are not able to consummate their relationship and she purposely leaves him for a number of years like this and so he dwindles and fades away and by the time he starts to like wither in essence and by the time he reaches her he is hell-bent on destruction and he's going to make her pay for all of the suffering that she has put him through and so the story ensues from there and it is amazing so I told you I was going to give you an overall rating overall this is a four the angst in this is a four and the spice in this is a three and it definitely delivers in all the ways. It's an amazing introduction. 
Okay, so the first real book in the series is A Hunger Like No Other, and this is an absolutely amazing, I'm checking out my, my notes, and an amazing, amazing story about Lachlan and Emmeline. Emmeline is part vampire and part um, Valkyrie, and Lachlan is a ancient Lycae from the Scottish Highlands. He is the king of the Lycae. He's been missing for hundreds and hundreds of years because he was abducted by the vampire horde and he was imprisoned underground and made to burn over and over and regenerate and then burn again so he has been tortured by the vampires and so there Emmeline is traveling she's looking for something that she's trying to discover she's traveling to France he is underground chained and bound and he sends his mate above and he knows that it's her and he is hell-bent on getting to her come hell or high water and so he gnaws off one of his appendages to get to her because he is like I am going to find her and so when he does that he gnaws off his appendage he find, goes topside she has disappeared but he's going to track her because he is a Lycae and Lycaes are amazing at tracking and so he tracks her down and when he finds her he doesn't know what she is he really doesn't even know what time it is so this is sort of an age gap if you will because he's an ancient immortal and she's very young she just came into her her prime he treats her very very poorly because he believes that she is a vampire and in this world vampires are vampire females have all died off because of a virus that is unexplained they don't know why he treats her very very poorly and he puts her through so many things because he despises her he's like why would fate saddle me with a mate such as this and by the time he discovers and learns what's really going on, he is going to have to do a ton of groveling to fix this situation. This story is an amazing, amazing situation. It is an age gap. It is a captor captive. It is a forbidden romance in that there are different clans and rival clans. And so, um, and it's also an enemies to lovers. Let me say all the Immortals After Dark series are um, enemies to lovers because they are, you know, through this period called the accession. The accession is a period of time when immortals war against immortals and it's sort of a culling or it's a cleansing or it's a helping to kind of thin the herd so that immortals don't get out of control troll because they never die off and so through the accession several things happen the culling happens the warring happens and then mates come together and it's often going to be in this accession it's mates of different clans so vampires and valkyries maybe lycae and humans maybe witches and demons like they're all going to sort of come together and that's so everything is an enemies to lovers situation so this is no different this is a overall rating of a five a spice of a five and an angst of a five there is, and that is like the overall, so there is a, each book has to be read in order because there is a development of the storyline and the plot is developing along the way. Each book is a um, standalone in that those couples get a happy ever after, but in each subsequent books, you're going to get cameos from couples in previous books. So again, you should really need to read them in order because this is going to culminate in one big sort of crescendo of a storyline and a development and the plot. And so you don't want to miss any of that. So you make sure you read them in order. So then the next book is No Rest for the Wicked. This is book two. And this is Sebastian Roth. This is one of the other brothers from the, um, I, I, like I mentioned, the, the Roth brothers. So these are vampires and his mate is Kettering the Cold. She's Kettering the Cold Hearted. And she is a Valkyrie as well. And she has killed over a thousand vampires and she wears their teeth on her neck. She is a vicious, vicious, vicious character and a marksman and a fighter, a warrior like none other. She is definitely, and she is called the cold hearted because she basically has no mercy on her victims. So she is entering a contest called the Talisman's High. She participates in it every year. She wins it every year and she is a vicious, vicious competitor. And so she is, is, is out for blood. Prior to her going to the Talisman's High, she goes on a mission and she comes upon a village and a abandoned sort of mansion. And when she enters, she's supposed to, the villagers have paid her to kill Sebastian, which is a vampire that lives in this um, in this town and in this village and when she comes upon him she quickly realizes that she has blooded him and she is just like come on I do not need this in my life I kill your kind but for whatever reason she is drawn to him she can't kill him but she doesn't want him around her either and so she does several things to um, 
disable him. And so it is a tit for tat. Every time she thinks she's going to take him out, she does something to disable him and he chases her all around. So remember when Sebastian was converted to be a vampire, he left Nikolai and his other brother. And I can't remember the other brother. There's one more because there's four of them. So the, the, he left the other brother. And so he's been sort of off on his own living in isolation. So he doesn't really understand this modern age. So he has to do some significant sort of catching up, if you will. And he decides that he is going to enter the talisman's high with her and they're going to work together, you know, and he's going to win her affections by showing her that he is a worthy opponent and a worthy mate for her. So in order for them to be successful in talisman, men's high they have to work together they have to get to know each other they have to learn to respect each other she has to learn to respect him and he has to try and understand her and her actions and the things that she does it's an amazing amazing story overall this is a five angsty four and spice four the next book in the series is Wicked Deeds on a Winter's Night. This is Bowen McCreeve and Mariketta the Awaited. This is one of my favorite books in the series. Um, basically, Bowen believes that he has, um, we meet Bowen first in a, a Hunger Like No Other because he is the cousin to um, Lachlan. And so in that book, we learn that Bowen has killed his mate and as a result she was running from him on a full moon because we learned that during a full moon the Lycae releases his beast and the beast is you know not that they're unthinking but they are driven by instinctual needs and so that's a very dangerous time for Lycae's and he said don't get in between a Lycae and his mate and some things happen and his mate was killed he comes upon Mariketta the Awaited she is a very powerful witch and soothsayer and um, there's, there's a story sort of that's continuing from the high competition. We're learning more about what's happening. He learns that um, she is dying in a cave and he's got to go. He's done some things in the, the um, high competition that he's got to go and resolve and fix. And it is thought that maybe he has a second mate and that never happened. So they're trying to figure out how Bowen and Mariketta are connected. We now are introduced to some other characters from the Fae were introduced to other characters from the demon realm and it is a amazing story an amazing amazing story I don't want to give away too much but I am going to say overall this is a five angst it is a four and probably a five angsty and spicy a three dark needs at night's edge then this is about Naomi and she is a dancer who lived between 1901 and 1927. She was a famous ballerina during that time and also a, um, oh, she was also a burlesque dancer as well. This is about the other brother, Conrad Rath, Roth. And so remember, we've got Sebastian, Nikolai and Murdoch is that's the other Murdoch is the other brother and then Conrad. And so Conrad has has red eyes because he has chosen to drink directly from the flesh. Vampires are not supposed to do that because when they do that, they take on the memories of the person that they have killed. And as a result, over time, trying to harbor all of these memories of all these people, you become insane. And so Conrad is slowly going crazy. And by the time they reach him, he is completely out of his mind, snarling and snapping and just, you know, he's responding to things that are not there and talking to people that are not there because he has all of these memories from people that he's drank and that he should not have. And so his brothers, Sebastian, Nikolai, and Murdoch grab Conrad. They take him and they chain him up in this old mansion. And in this mansion, there is a ghost there. And the ghost is Naomi. And Conrad is the only one that can see her. And the story unfolds from there. Conrad is a virgin hero. And Naomi is the only thing that can calm him. They are hoping that they're going to give Conrad a month. And in that month's time, he will be able to calm himself. He will be able to stop drinking from the flesh. He will drink bag blood. And as a result, he will help 
oh, like basically overcome the madness that has he has succumbed to. And so they and they hope that they are going to then introduce him to his mate. And he doesn't want to do any of the things that the brothers say because he's so rageful and he's so angry at Nikolai. Because remember, Nikolai is the one who forced this on Conrad. Conrad did not want this. And so by the time that the, you know he starts to become coherent, he starts to explain his story as to why he did not want this. And Conrad, I mean, Nikolai is horrified because there's a lot that he didn't know about Conrad's history. And so um, Naomi is what really brings Conrad to his knees. He, she's this little four foot dancer. Conrad is like six five, almost seven foot. And it is just amazing. This is absolutely my favorite. You wanna talk about a broken hero? You wanna talk about a scarred hero? You wanna talk about a virgin hero? It is just amazing. It is such a good story. And I'm gonna say overall, it is a five. And angst, it is a four. And spice, it is a three. So now I'm going to say that there is still the ongoing plot. We see um, Mari or Marikette of the Awaited. We see Bowen. We see Nix. We see Regan. We see Nikolai and Sebastian. And we see all of their mates. And we see what's happening with them. And we see that there is a plot developing and the accession is continuing. And so one of the common key phrases in this series is happy accession because, you know, alliances are being formed. We're starting to see that there are definite sides and allegiances to which very soon we're going to get a name to those allegiances and those sides. But let's continue on into Dark Desires After Dusk. This is Holly. She is a human. She is a PhD. She is a math wizard. And this is Kadian Woeed. He is the second in line to the throne to um, his brother. We're going to to Raiden. We're going to learn more about Raiden in a bit. So we first meet Kadian in the Talisman's High. And so you know, we see that he is trying, he, he knows who his mate is. However, he's not going to claim her because she is still human and she has not transitioned over to be an immortal yet. And some things happen and she is now set upon by other demons and Cadian says, you know what, I'm, I, need to, I need to claim her. I need to go in and save her and prevent her from being harmed. And so we then also see that he is supposed to go and meet his brother, King Rydstrom, but King Rydstrom is kidnapped by Sabine, the Queen of Illusionists and the story evolves from there. Overall, this is a five. Emotionally, this is a four. And Spice, it is a five. So good. Kiss of a Demon King. This is about Sabine, the Sorceress of Illusion, and Rydstrom Weed, the King of Demons. And let me say that this is a tit for tat. You torture me, I'm going to torture you. You do something to me, I'm going to get you back. It takes you to a whole nother level. Like I said, it starts over here with Kadian Weed, his brother, at the end, we see that Kadian catches up with Rydstrom and you see what he has done and you're just like, so the tit for tat is just amazing in this book and it is absolutely amazing. So overall, it's a five, angst, it's a four and spice, it's a four. The next is Untouchable. That's book seven. This is about Daniela, the, the ice maiden. She's an ice queen and Murdoch Roth. And again, I'm, you know, I don't want this video to be super long, so I'm just going to go quick. She is a sister to Mist, and she is a Valkyrie, but she is also something else. We start to figure out what that is, and then when she meets Murdoch, Mur she clearly bloods him. He does not want it. He is known as a ladies' man. He is fighting it for all it's worth. He doesn't want any part of it, and so it is definitely an evolution of how he feels and she is not gonna take any of his nonsense and she forces him to be honest with himself and with her about what he wants. So the obstacles to, there are obstacles to overcome for them to be together um, and much of it, it seems very insurmountable. Are they going to be able to overcome it? Overall, this is a five, angst, it's a four, spice, it's a two. Pleasure of a Dark Prince. This is about Gareth, the King of the Lycae, and Lucia. And he sends his mate. Lycae, she, ha she has his Lycae skills. She has an archery that is unprecedented. It's like no other. And we find out why she never misses. And if she does miss, it hurts tremendously. We go back to Lachlan's story in book one and A Hunger Like No Other to really understand what's going on in this story. It is amazing. It is so good. He chases her for a year. So when you talk about that people deserve their HEA, this couple absolutely deserves their HEA. Overall, it's a four, angst a four, spice a four. This is Demon from the Dark. This is Carol the Grey and Malcolm Slane. And I am going to say that this is my favorite book in the series. It is absolutely, it is a vampire, a vampire and a demon or a vampire and a witch. 
and overall this is a five angst it is a four spice it is a four we learned that there is there he's called a veman and so they are it's united they're stronger than any individual species and he is created to be this way against his will. This is a story of torture. This is a story of trauma. This is a story of being sold into slavery. And so Malcolm's story is very, very heartbreaking in, in a lot of ways. And it is so amazing. But also we are introduced to another char character called Declan Chase. We learn more about him as things develop. Overall, this is a four angst. It is a four spice. It is a four. Dreams of a Dark Warrior. This is Aiden the Fierce. He is a berserker and the Valkyrie Regan. We've seen Regan in many of the books up to this point and we now get to understand Regan's story and it is nothing like that you think it is. It is amazing and the backstory is very very intense. We are starting to learn now the factions. The Veritas army is like of the good guys if you will. The Pravis is of the bad guys and they are separating into factions and the accession is coming very close if not already in it. I'm not going to go into great detail because this is thick into the storyline and the plot but I'm going to say overall this is a five. Angst it is a three and Spice it is a three. Lothair, Enemy the of the Old. This book is amazing. It is a five across the board. Five angst, five spice, five everything. It's just good. And this is Lothair Deciano, and he is um, united with Elizabeth Ellie Pierce, but there is also a sorcerer named Soroya, and so his mate is Soroya, stuck in the body of Ellie, and so he is doing all the work necessary and using all of his debts to get him to free his mate and it is an intense amazing amazing story check it out so good so the next book shadows claim and this is about one of the decianos an ancient race related to lothair this is tristan deciano and um princess bettina of abaddon and she is, this is a love triangle she is obsessed with caspian a demon a, i think he's a, he's a fire is he a fire demon? He's a demon. He's a point of one of the demon realms. So she is obsessed with him. And Trahan, to make a long story short, it's he traces into her realm of Abaddon to kill Caspian because Caspian violated one of the ancient Dacian rules. So when he traces in, he trace he sends her, Princess Patina, recognize she is his mate, and she then is in a drunken state and she invites her him to her her bed and does not realize or recognize it's not Caspian she thinks it's Caspian so she bloods him and to make a long story short he learns that she is in love with Caspian and he is not going to let her go because she is his mate and the story evolves from there so it is a love triangle like no other and so she her hand in marriage is being sold off to whomever wins this contest and so he decides to enter the contest and the story really evolves from there and to say that Caspian and Trahan are enemies is like it's an understatement understatement of the year so overall a five angst a four spice a four McCreeve another of my favorite books in the series this is about William McCreeve he is the twin to Monroe and this is about Chloe Todd. This is the daughter of one of the other sort of Pravis nemesis that held all of these creatures in a dungeon and in a prison that we learned about in earlier stories. William has a tremendous amount of trauma from his past that was done to him by a succubus and as a result they lost their family. Everyone except Monroe. The story develops from there and he is forced to accept his mate and at first everything is beautiful and wonderful until it is not this is a five everything five spice five angst five emotionally amazing story amazing amazing so good okay dark sky book 14 this is about melanthi or lanthi and thronos a reckoner lanthi is the queen of persuasion let me say this I felt like Lanthe was a total bitch. I absolutely hated her. Didn't like anything about her. Didn't think anything was redeeming. He is basically, think of like an, the Reckoners are like angels in heaven and, and, but they are thought of as like winged demons, but they really are not. Uh, but they might be. Lanthe is the sister to uh, Sabine and Sabine and Lanthe are Sorcerer and Sorcerer. I don't like them because they are arrogant and just awful, awful 
beings and she is uh, he is a virgin she is not and he holds it against her she's not gonna let him I don't know I hated her but still overall it's a five angst it's a five spice it's a three sweet ruin this is about rune he is a bane blood he is a dark blood his blood is basically poisonous he is part of the Pravis we're starting to learn more about them and this is about Josephine the shady lady she's a villain protector of prostitutes she doesn't know what she is he thinks she's a vampire we have to learn what she is the story sort of develops Overall, it's a five. Angst, it's a five. Emotionality, or spice, it is a four. Really, really good. And that is also when we are first introduced to Dark Fay as well. And Shadow Seduction is basically a short story about Mercio Deciano, Prince of the Dacians, and Caspian the Tracker. Not going to say much about this other than overall it's a four. Angst is a five and spice it is a three. It is so good. And this is a male male. Wicked Abyss. This is about a primordial demon and a fae. It is about Abassian. We learn about Abassian from Rune and Calliope. She is a fae. And again, more of the accession, the Veritas, the Pravis, and now we're learning more and more about the Morior. Morior were introduced in Ruin, in Sweet Ruin's book. Amazing, overall four, angst three, spice three. And then that brings us up to the long-awaited Monroe. Monroe is so, so good. It is the twin brother to Uliam or to McCreeve. And Monroe is a, like a sentinel brother to Uliam, as I said. And this is Karenny or Ren. And she is the leader of the circus hunter. She is captured. He is captured by warlocks. We see that um, Monroe gets himself into trouble at the end of McCreeve. And the story continues from there. And he has to make some really difficult choices. He wakes up. It, there's some time travel that exists in this book as well. And the story is evolving and developing. More characters are being introduced. We're also seeing cameos from other characters that we have seen multiple times in this book. It delivered in so many ways. I am happy that I waited so long to get to it. It is an amazing story. Overall, it is a five. Angst, it is two. And Spice, it is a three. So let me say this. This was one of the hardest videos I had to feed. First of all, my camera kept failing so if you notice towards the end I start to speed it up because my camera is acting completely up I don't know what's going on but I'm gonna have to figure that out I'm so sorry that th it, this video turned out the way that it did I hope that you guys get something out of this nonetheless and so overall like the series is a five the spice of the series is a overall a four and a half and the angst of the series is a four it is an amazing series it stands the test of time it is as good if not better in me reading it the second time around because now I'm reading it and catching and picking up different things. I think that if you have not given this series a try, please do so. You will not be disappointed. And having said that, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Please hit that bell notification button so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Hit that like bell because it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. And hopefully I will get my camera figured out so I don't have to go through this drama of it cutting out in the middle of me filming. So I look forward to seeing you in my next video. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. Bye.